Little hiccup with the clock during the, oh, there's a goal. I was gonna say during the halftime, Farthing's penalty actually counted down and disappeared. They had to put that one back up, but they will not stop the Niagara Lock Monsters from stopping the seven goal run. A nice little tuck home. You see Corey Fowler with the ball is gonna make a great pass, drawing everyone to him just past the stick of Eric Schul. And the finish makes it eight to five. Speaking of Schul, I actually had it pointed out to me a player personnel director, Jeff Dowling, who's doing a great job in his role with the league, former coach of these Niagara Lock Monsters, that uh, Schul's first, at least one of his um, loose ball fouls should not have been called. It is a nine foot rule. You can bang somebody on a loose ball as long as we're within nine feet. Now the, the downside for uh, Durham here and the upside for Niagara is Niagara scored on the first of Mark Farthing's back-to-back -back penalties, which means Niagara still on the penalty, a full two-minute power play after scoring the first one. And they get another one. Brendan Tainhouse with his second of the game. That is just a simple rip from up high. They're moving the ball around the outside, and he just lets it fly. Tucks that one home. It was Favero with the earlier goal. And how often we've seen Fowler to Favero for a finish. This time it's Tainhouse. He gets some congratulations on the bench. Brandon Slade chatting him up as they head over to their bench. And we will see the face off again. Triolo's out there. Baudouin tried to get it. Triolo kind of reached around him. Baudouin took a smack and it is Niagara once again coming up with it. So back to back. Power play goals for Niagara, and they have possession again, so talk about momentum swing. The, the farthing penalties really putting a crimp in the style of these term turf dogs, but they're back to full strength. Niagara still controlling Fowler, nice little slip move and scores. Gets by Triolo with the hard jab step, cuts down low off the shoulder, and has Ryan Masters leaning to his left. We saw Dylan Goddard and Jesse Guerin both do that to goalies earlier. It is so hard against a player as talented as Fowler. What a great pass to whip the sidearm across to him. And Fowler just gives the look of far side, pulls it back just inside the near post. And just like that, it's an 8-7 game. Edwards wins the face off to himself. He's having a pretty successful first game in the league. Favero takes the pass along the far boards. Slade setting a pick, he eventually runs around it, but we're gonna call it moving. It's great effort by Josh Watson to get off. It forced Brandon Slade to just kind of run along with the pick he was setting for Favero. Not much question about that one. Hopcroft to Guerin, such a smooth player. He gets bumped into the boards, hands it off to Croak. Hopcroft with the shot. Hopcroft, one of the hardest shots in lacrosse. That was, ball skips away from him though. Oh, and there goes Edwards. Can Guerin get back with him? That is some great hustle by Jesse Guerin. Edwards gets the shot off. He'll try and check Croak. Edwards a little tired. Now Croak throws on the brakes. He's gonna hold on to the ball. And now he flips it ahead to Hopcroft. Durham's players have been out there for a while. They've gone O-D-O, -O, although most of them did stay up in the other end. It was really just Croak and Guerin that sprinted back. Oh, nice try by McNulty going low to high, but Danko just stays in the way to stop that one. Ball scooped up by Houtby. Hopcroft got his stick on that one. Now Hopcroft's coming back. Guerin's back there too, so a couple of tired turf dogs out on the defensive end. We'll see if Niagara can take advantage of it and even this thing up. Guerin's going up high to chase Baudouin. There's a diving attempt by Caputo. It's gonna be Masters ball and he'll pass it out to Hopcroft. Hopcroft will pass it off and he's going to the bench. For a second I thought he was joining the offense. Mike Triolo stems the tide of Niagara. Makes it 9-7. Gets some momentum back for the Turf Dogs. A nice little play. Smart decision by Hopcroft apparently to stay on the floor, make that pass up. You can see him throwing it ahead to Triolo, who runs a little give and go. 
and tucks it home. Nice passing. And Hopcroft with a well-earned assist on that one, even though it's a secondary assist. Niagara possession off the loose ball, foul off the faceoff. Fowler takes on the near side, drops it. McCrory watching him. Now Rennie picks him up. Fowler cuts back, gets it, but he's too far in. Comes across. The shot there by Dumont. Fowler's going to track it down, keep it from going over and back. They've got seven seconds to shoot. Rennie over on the far side. Knocks it away from Newfeld. Nice shift in terms of hustle by Rennie. Did lose Fowler, but that can happen to anybody. Pete Rennie who has really gotten quicker over the last year or so. Just seems to, it must have put in a lot of work because he just seems to have stepped up the pace of his game and his ability to cover. And it's really helped on the defensive side. Has him on the practice roster with the New England Black Wolves. But, I mean, he couldn't keep up with Corey Fowler. So Fowler's just a water bug flitting about out there. There's a shot by Joe Wasson with two seconds left on the shot clock. It'll go wide. So he just lets it roll down. Get some rest as he goes slowly back into his end and Durham will get their defenders out. <clears throat> Eric Schul runs low on the defense and indicates to his teammate to head up high. Favero on the far side, Hogarth watching him. Nice solid pick there by Brandon Stahl. Gets the thing, they get the shot off, but the turf dogs back the other way. Gearin behind the back. That's a gorgeous pass in the finish by McNulty. Gearin using Thomas Hogarth as a decoy, forced the defenders to respect that pass to the far side. And instead, the nifty little behind the backer and McNulty makes it go five hole past Connor Danko. McCrory and Baudouin out there for another faceoff. They've certainly faced each other out on the, the Kufla field. McCrory, a Western player. Niagara gets possession once again. Tainhouse loses the ball, scoops it back up. There's Rennie on him once again. Nice pickup by Rennie, but Caputo drives to the net. And Josh Wasson forces him to miss with the shot. There's a cutter. Brooker Muir with the ball. Faking the pass, takes a shot to try and get a reset, but it bounces straight out to Nevin Sullivan. He's buried along the boards. McNulty is there. Nice little scoop move to get it, but it bounds away from him. Grabbed eventually by Tainhouse. He's just going to trot up the floor and wait for his teammates to get there. Now he'll bounce it to Newfeld and head to the bench. <coughs> Hard pass across to Fowler. Back down. The give and go almost worked off the cr crossbar. The shot by Brian Newfeld. Here come the turf dogs, Hopcroft with it. A couple of big whacks. Joel Coyle really laying the lumber on him. Garen once again down in the corner. Hopcroft. Thought he drew a hold. They're gonna at least call possession and Derek Hopcroft is asking the referee how about a call? How about a call for the hold first? But they do get possession. Triolo heads off and Durham sets up in the offensive zone. McMahon cutting to the net, picked up nicely by Coyle. So they go up to Croak, who's over to Hopcroft. Hard pass across. Great awareness there. Oh, but they score on the far side. Just gonna give some props to Mitch Dumont for being over so quickly to take away the quick stick, but they throw it to Hopcroft. We talk about how hard he can shoot. And he just lets it fly. Beats Connor Danko and it's back up to a four goal lead, 11-7 for Durham. 
There it is, just straight over the top. Classic shooting motion by Derek Hopcroft. Boy, he's got a laser. So after Niagara opened up the second half with three straight goals out of the sticks of Favero, Tainhouse, and Fowler, the Triolo McNulty. And now Hopcroft responding. 8.20 to go here in the third quarter. Durham with the ball, Gearin looking low, not there, so goes over to Triolo, trying to get by Slade and go to the net. Does so, shoots, it's stopped. Gearin had plenty of fakes, but Connor Danko just stayed with him. Nice patience by the young goaltender. And he makes the stop, Niagara heading it back up the other way. Bricker Muir wants the ball, it's gonna go over to Caputo instead. And his junior teammate from the Brandon Excelsiors, Muir will get it now from the stick of a house, kind of shovels the ball towards the net as Rennie takes him down. But Niagara does come up with it, Caputo in the corner. Here's Edwards, Twister almost found that top corner. That's a nifty little move by the young defender. We're gonna have the officials time out, 7.40 to go in the third quarter. Exciting Canadian Lacrosse League action. I'm Stephen Stamp bringing you Durham Turf Dogs versus Niagara Lock Monsters. We'll take a break and we'll be back. Where it's 11-7. Durham up eight to four at the half. Three straight goals by Niagara. Great response by Durham to get three straight. Goddard takes the pass from Hopcroft. Cody McMahon on the near side, the other lefty, and there's the pass through to the righties. Hopcroft with the jump. Can't quite tuck that one home. Danko with another save. Nice outlet pass by Jordan Hauppe under pressure. Gat lets it rip. Masters just tucks that into his equipment. He's going to throw the outlet lob to Hopcroft. Gat watching him. Hopcroft with a couple goals. Looking for an assist with a great pass to Gearin. Saved by Danko. He had Dylan Goddard over on the far side, but that was a pretty good shooting lane for Gearin. There's the attempt. Doesn't go through. And the Lock Monsters head the other way. Tainhouse, nice little move. Passes it to Caputo, it just skips off his stick. It will go straight over to Mitch Dumont so they get it back, but Caputo just not ready for that one. Comes Favero looking for Baudouin coming late off the bench. He's picked up. Favero's gonna let it fly, scores! Masters got some of it, but not enough, and that just trickles through the legs. And that's just a nice little spin move, a bit of a pick there, helping him out. And Niagara stops the bleeding, gets back on the board, pulls within three at 11-8. Here comes the pick. It's a nice one by Brandon Slade. 
Edwards with the win off the faceoff, gets it into the very side of his stick, gets it back, scores! There it is. That first Seelax goal by Tim Edwards has been a little elusive, but he tucks it home. Beautiful play by Edwards, showing that athleticism. We talk about how quick he is. And a nice little twister to finish it off. Just takes the pass back. A little give and go with Corey Fowler. And he's right back out to take the face off. But this one goes over to Wasson. He throws it to the far side. To McCrory and they'll set up on O. Pete Rennie with the ball. Sounds like someone, maybe God, is hammering on the building, but I think it's just the music here in the stadium. Jesse Gearin with it. Goddard goes far side and Danko just gets a bit of it. No, they're saying it didn't touch him. I thought it went off of Danko. They were saying over and back. But the 30 second shot clock expires and Matt Giles, the Durham head coach, is wondering what's up because that really looked like it went off of Danko but Tim Edwards is on fire. He just sprints up the floor, takes the pass and tucks it home and three Durham Turf Dogs are arguing with referee Gord Brown that that should have been a reset and they should have maintained possession of the ball. We'll see the goal here. Edwards just running straight down the middle again and again a little bit of a twister on that one and tucks it to the to his right and there Pete Rennie's still arguing with the technical official. I, I agree with him I thought it fairly clearly went off the shoulder of Danko but to no avail and just like that it's 11-10. The Lock Monsters now on a bit of a roll. That shot stopped by Masters. Ball is still loose on the turf as Hogarth kind of stripped it away from Brandon Stahl. Now everyone going after it along the wall. It's trapped on the floor. Stahl saying, no, no, I was still cradling it, but Durham heading back up the other way. There's the pass forward. Hopcroft takes it. Oh, just misses the net. Nice pass from Goddard, a great three-way play. Started off by Shule. Oh, Caputo gets it stopped by Masters and goes straight into the crease. Durham possession, Goddard looking up the floor, gets it to Hopcroft. Hopcroft is gonna wait for his teammates to get there. Throws it back up to Croak. Now they're moving around. Croak looking for gear and goes to McNulty instead. Big save by Danko. And the Turf Dogs will get a reset now. And Gearin will survey the floor. Gets a bit of a pick for McNulty. Croak fakes the, behind, the little backflip pass. Now he does throw it back. There's a bouncer. Goddard can't find the net, but it goes to Croak. And the Turf Dogs want to reset again. And they're still not going to get one. Long outside shot. I think that one was probably right. It looked like it did miss the goaltender Danko. Niagara will look to tie things up. They haven't been tied since Durham got their fifth goal after a 4 to 1 lead by the Lock Monster. Seven straight goals from Durham, three from Niagara, three from Durham, almost a fourth. From Niagara as they had a three goal, they're on a current three goal run, but a big save by Masters and Pete Rennie heads up the floor. Rennie banged along the boards, gets the ball back after it popped loose. Hit from Corey Fowler. Fowler knocks it loose. Sorry, that's Stahl. Slade, Brandon Slade knocking that loose. And then we've got a penalty coming. Rennie being abused along the boards. Comes out after the play when the ball's nowhere near and flattens. Brandon Slade, who was just the last of many to have hit him. And that leads to a little frustration from Rennie and Niagara. Extra man and a chance to tie things up. Remember when Mark Farthing took two penalties on one play just before the half, Niagara came out in the third quarter and scored on both halves of that double minor. 
Tain has had one of them from right around there. But he's going to go to Fowler behind the back. Fowler looking for the cutter. It's not quite there for Newfeld, so they move it around. Now Newfeld gets it, goes low. Masters stops that and pounces on the rebound. He's got a cutter down the floor. Hogarth taking off. And he's going to try and get it to him. Does so. What a goal! We thought Pete Rennie's pass earlier was fantastic. This may have just topped it. I talked about Connor Danko being able to throw passes. How about Ryan Masters hitting Hogarth? What a play by Hogarth down at the other end. Look at that, just on a line to Hogarth who's falling. I don't think Newfeld even had much to do with him falling. I think it was just the moving forward and reaching out for that pass. That is a huge shorthanded goal for the Durham Turf Dogs. Wow, that's a beauty. Darcy, Darcy Smith Becker, if you're watching, you're talking about forever learning the game. That's how a goalie throws an outlet pass. My goodness. Niagara wins yet another faceoff. Nico Baudouin has been a pretty nice addition to their squad in that facet of the game. The score clock operator is so fascinated by that goal, they haven't even put it up on the board yet. But that will make it. <laughs> now it goes up, just as I say that. It goes up and it's 12 to 10. I don't blame them. They were probably just watching the replay up on the big screen. And got distracted. And a block by Nevin Sullivan. And then he gets run by Phil Caputo. He still got the ball. Caputo just clamps his arm on Sullivan's stick. And it's a 10 second count. And I'm not quite sure how that's not a holding the stick call as Caputo just clamped his arm down on Sullivan's stick. But instead it's the 10 second call and Niagara gets the ball. They still have 45 seconds left to kind of try to counter that shorthanded goal. Tainhouse at the top. Down to Favero, Fowler cutting. Goes back and gets it up high instead. Slips down, looking for the pass. It was low, Caputo catches that one. It was tipped, but gets through to Favero. Tracking it down. Slade can't get there in time to prevent the over and back. We're gonna have matching penalties to Eric Schul and Brendan Tainhouse as they got into it in front of the net. So that's gonna make it four on three. Advantage for the Niagara Lock Monsters who trail 12-10. We'll see. Oh, so Tainhouse kind of tripped up Shul, and Shul responded by swinging the stick while he was down. And taking Tainhouse in the leg. Mark Farthing over to ask and saying it should be Turf Dog's ball. And Gord Brown's going to go check with Bill Fox, the senior official here. They're discussing, and it's going to be Niagara possession. <laughs> you no doubt saw Mark Farthing waving to his teammates to come back. It'll be Shul, Hogarth, and Farthing. Three Peterborough lads playing for the term Turf Dogs in Oshawa, defending against against the Niagara Lock Monsters who are being called for a, an illegal trend. They're getting called for a, an illegal change by the technical official. Brendan Tainhouse in the box is just now calming down. No, he's not. He's indicating so they should check their math. Four, four guys now. Newfeld, the in home's going to have to go serve it. Their protests fall on deaf ears. We're three on three. So, a penalty by either team would lead to a penalty shot. Durham gets the ball. It'll be Derek Hopcroft, Cody McMahon, and Matthew Croak out there. They're just going to let the first penalty expire. And then they'll come out. They get some pressure, though, and Hopcroft close to mid floor. Here comes one player out on the floor. Rennie will just 
zip over to the bench and let McNulty go and join. McMahon passes it down to him. Back up to Hopcroft, shoots the save by Danko. He's looking for an outlet pass, gets it to Helpy. Hopcroft hustling back. Now it's an over and back call when you're shorthanded. Helpy not maybe familiar with the rule. When you get inside that restraining line and see like you have to stay in there, you have 10 seconds to get over center. When you're shorthanded, an additional five to get inside the restraining line, then you've got to stay in there. He stepped out and Durham gets it back. Could be a costly mistake. 102 to play on the matching penalties. Durham wants to, nope. I thought they wanted to back in. They're just yelling their guys to get back up the floor. Helpy with the long outlet. No, he's just going to throw it up because he knew he was running out of time. He had nobody to pass it to. So he'll just throw it the length of the floor. It bounces into the mesh. And they set up. Niagara still under the threat of a penalty shot if they do take another penalty here over the next 40 seconds. That's when Shul and Tainhouse will get back out on the floor. <clears throat> Garen takes it. Behind the back pass. Goddard tucks it far side. Not much Danko could do there. You get that man advantage when they move the ball that well. And Jesse Guerin and Dylan Goddard, such talented left-handed players up on the offensive end of the floor. And Hopcroft starts it all off with the pass. Guerin behind the back and Goddard just goes far side. And you can see the ball coming back to the, our right of the net. Of course, means it bounced off the far post or the mesh just inside the post and whipped across to the far side. So. What a shot by Goddard. That will make it four on four lacrosse for the next 29 seconds. And a 13 to 10 lead for Durham. Farthing comes up with the ball off the faceoff. Nice job to avoid the over and back and get it to Wasson across the floor. Wasson's gonna let it fly. That one goes wide. They're not gonna be able to get to it. It's over and back. Got 16 seconds left here in the third quarter. We'll be taking a break between quarters, so make sure you stick with us for what should be an exciting fourth quarter of Sealax action. I'm Steven Stamp from the General Motors Center in Oshawa. Some pressure from Garen defensively. The players are out of the box. Four seconds to shoot. Hard from Coyle, bounces off the backboards. And that'll do it for the third quarter. We'll take a break, we'll be back with quarter number four.
Hello, lacrosse friends. Welcome back. The final 15 minutes of regulation time in this game between the Durham Turf Dogs and Niagara Lock Monsters. The home Durham squad up 13 to 10. McCrory and Baudouin out for the faceoff to start things up. I'm Stephen Stamp bringing you all the action here today. Remember, you can watch more Canadian Lacrosse League action tonight at 7.30 from Paris, Ontario, the Sillaps Athletic Center. 7.30, Southwest Cyclops become the fifth and final Sealax team to kick off their season when they face the Oswegian Demons. Triolo with the outside shot, stopped by Danko. Boy, Danko's been pretty solid since he came in. Triolo got rolled over. The ball heads down the floor and Durham's gonna come up with it. Pete Rennie running it forward. Croak spins away from a check from Newfeld, throws it up top. Garen surveys, goes to Goddard. Good move today, he's got four goals. Make it four still as his foot was on the crease line. At least that's what we think. We're gonna have to take another look at that one. Here they come the other way, saved by Masters. Niagara gets the ball back. Corey Fowler, speaking of hot days, Fowler with three goals and four assists today to lead all scorers. One ahead of Jesse Gearn, who's got a goal and five assists. Oh, nice pass. No, not, not able to finish. Shule, but Goddard with a beauty pass over to him. Now Hopcroft gets it. He's going to go to Goddard, who wants to shoot this time. Tries the twister, but misses the net. Pretty good defense by Mitch Dumont, limiting his opportunity, but Goddard still got the shot off. Four goals and an assist for him. Fowler. Over to Favero. Turf comes up a bit, but he keeps his footing. Tim Edwards looking for the hat trick. Penalty coming to Durham. Danko sprints to the, box, the bench, but there's only two seconds left on the shot clock. They gotta let it go. They score, but it's too late. Favero raises his hand kind of half-heartedly because he knew it was a bit late. And Thomas Hogarth and Favero share a smile. Slashing call to Mark Farthing. We're gonna take another look. Now here is the goal at the other end that Goddard was, from Goddard, disallowed. Ooh, that must be diving towards the goalie because look at his feet. It looks like the feet are good. I don't, judging, I mean, you can't quite see behind a Lock Monsters player. I don't see how he could have been in, but he is heading towards the goalie. You can't do that in Sealax. I believe that's what the call was. I'll have to check on that afterwards and see, but. What a diving attempt by Goddard. You're allowed to go across the crease, not into the crease towards the goalie. Trying to protect the goalkeepers from people diving their legs. Tainhouse with the hard shot from outside. Goes off Masters up into the mesh. It's gonna be Niagara ball once again. They continue on the power play. 138 left in Farthing's slashing call. Farthing a little uncharacteristically slashy today. Slade, pass over, a shot misses. Favero tries to tuck it in. Up top to Tainhouse, straight back to Slade. He's gonna go behind the back and Fowler's gonna shoot. That one's knocked down by Joe Wasson. Well, knocked up actually. Slade with the shot, that goes wide. 14 on the shot clock. Hogarth, nice job to knock. His man free so that Rennie was able to pick it up, but he loses the ball. He's tugged down, and that's going to be possession Durham. Phil Caputo wants a call because Rennie kind of knocked his stick away, but you're not getting that one after you just tackled a guy. Tainhouse out playing on Guerin. He'll flip it behind Rennie McNulty and head to the net. John Arnold was looking up at the clock, missed it. There's Guerin, just misses over the top, grazed the crossbar, and he had some space. Dankel throws a bit of a block there, and then he wants a call on the player running into him as he was in his crease. Newfeld will pass it back. 
There's a bit of a twister taken by Brandon Stahl, but Masters has that one, no problem. They get possession again, and Coyle will slow things down. And Niagara's going to get their full complement of power play guys out there. Eventually, now they send their fifth man, the shot, Masters of the save. And nice job there by Zach Reed. He was sent out to pick up Farthing coming out of the penalty box. And couldn't quite catch that long pass, but did knock it away, so Farthing couldn't have the breakaway. Durham almost took advantage of it, but the Lock Monsters coaching staff alert to what was happening, got him out there. That's why they weren't sending their full offensive complement out, and instead sent Reed to go and take that away. Nice, no luck pass, but McCrory can't put it away. That was Cody McMahon making that beautiful pass, looking low and passing it to the cutter. Ball caught by Houtby, he'll let it fly, scores! Jordan Houtby, Houtby just tucks it inside the post. And Ryan Masters looks to his teammates and says, taps himself in the stomachs and says, that's on me. So that's a long outside shot that the goalie generally is going to be expected to stop. Nice little pass on the run, and Houtby with just a spin move. Ryan McCrory up on him. Help be looking at the stick thinking, where you been all my life? He has not been a big goal scorer. But that's a sweet outside shot there. Nice kick off the face off by Triolo, but Niagara comes up with it and scores. Just like that. And Triolo is up there thinking, why didn't you guys pick up that ball? It's a huge goal. Brendan Tainhouse, the veteran, just picks it up. And you can see he just hustles after it, beats Shul to the ball. Rennie tries to get him, and they Shul's behind him. Rennie's cutting through the crease. The timing was perfect for Tainhouse. As nobody could get to him, and he just popped that shot past the feet of Masters. And don't look now, but with just over 10 minutes to go, Niagara's back within one, 13 to 12 in favor of Durham. Durham. Coyle throws it down into the corner. Gat looking for someone, reverses direction. Talk about ankle breaking cuts, he almost broke his own ankle there. Eight to shoot, ball's chopped out, six on the shot clock. Hard pass across is picked off. Goddard's just gonna lope up and now he's gonna put on the Jets. Throws on the brakes and passes back to Guerin. He didn't have an angle, great job by Dumont to take it away. Big hit by Brooker Muir. Garen gives it up to McNulty, gets it straight back. Hopcroft. Oh, he might have a shot here. Hard work by Matt Croak to open some space. The pass down low. Goddard tries to tuck one by the feet of Danko, but Danko with the stop. Outlet pass right in the stick of Newfeld. He's one on three, but he goes to the net anyway, and the save by Masters. Hopcroft ran right past the ball, but luckily Jesse Garen was very alert and picked that one up. The Turf Dogs get possession. There's a shot by Farthing. That one goes off of the defender. Bounces out towards Goddard, but Danko's going to scrape it back into his tur into his crease. Make the pass to Newfeld. Quite a game here this afternoon. We had an exciting one last night at the ILA. 14-12 final for Barry over Oswekin. The defending champs get their first win of the year. I have to say, though, the play, a little cleaner a little sharper today. There's a penalty. I was meaning clean in the sense of passes being caught and things, but Hogarth drags down an Niagara player and he's gonna go off two minutes for holding. And he knows it, he didn't even wait for the ref to point at him. He just started walking to the penalty box. So, trailing by one, 8.18 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Niagara Turf Dogs with a chance to tie things up. And Tainhouse, who has been hot of late, We'll start with the ball up top. Tainhouse with three goals. And they're pretty big ones as they have come late here in the game. Tainhouse to Fowler. 
Shot scores. Bounces off the gear of Masters and Fowler's got his fourth. And we have a tie game, 13-13 with 8.05 to go. This is the kind of action Sealax was created to provide. Hope you're all enjoying the show. I'm Steven Stamp bringing this game to you. There's Fowler just stepping in and again has Masters just a little bit over to his left and tucks it back to the goalie's right. Such precise shooting. There's Triolo facing off against Edwards. Triolo pulls it back, but everyone's going after that ball. And I mean everyone on the floor has had a go at that scrum at some point. Edwards winds up with it eventually. Takes a bump from Nevin Sullivan. There's a shot by Slade that Masters just got the five hole closed in time to stop. Wasson being tra tracked by Slade. Hard work for this young, talented young player, Brandon Slade. And he's gonna come up with the ball and send Tim Edwards, but Durham's got a couple players back, McMahon and Guerin trying to check him. McMahon turns him aside. I thought Edwards may have actually had a chance to go to the net. Now he's gonna just keep going. Nice job by Pete Rennie as he got the stick up around the neck to just really release it and not draw a penalty on himself there. Now he just clamps the stick of Dustin Gatt under his arm. Outside shot by Tainhouse. Rebound picked up, but Gatt is flattened as he tries to take that shot. And Mark Farthing gets the loose ball. What a pass to Hopcroft. He changes direction, but great work by the big man Tainhouse to take away the lane to the net. Guerin is going to try it to Hopcroft again. He puts his shoulder down, flattened. Hit of the game there. That was Brooker Muir throwing that one. Start, shot clock will expire. Niagara gets the ball again. Tied up 13-13. 6.22 to go in the fourth quarter. That means we'll take our final officials break. And we'll be back with the final 6.22 of this Seelax action. Thirteen, thirteen, six twenty-two to go from the General Motors Center here in Oshawa. Niagara will have the ball and they will try to establish their first lead since way back in the first quarter. Back and forth action in the Canadian Lacrosse League. Dumont over to Coyle. Newfeld looking for the pass. It bounces right back to him off of the stick of Hogarth. But Hogarth battling hard to try and keep it away from him. They're still fighting for it right along the boards. Joe Wasson in there digging. You're going to say it was clamped by a Niagara player and Durham will get it. See Daryl Gibson, Durham's assistant coach. Helping out with that call, pointing in the direction of the Turf Dogs. Sullivan gives it over to Guerin, and Durham sets up in the offensive zone. Croak to Triolo, and Goddard didn't quite have the ball when he cut to the net. So Fowler, he can't scoop it up either. Now he's got it. 
Triolo watches Fowler. Dangerous man with four goals, four assists, and he's heading towards the net. Pulls up, has a streaking slade, but he's nicely picked up there by Mark Farthing, the Turf Dogs captain. Oh, now he cuts inside Farthing, but stopped by Masters. Goddard gets it, he's running up the floor. Looking who he's got, here comes Hopcroft off the bench. A spin and pass, great play by Goddard, and Hopcroft just misses the far side. Goes out into the seats. Hopcroft will get possession, they're saying it went off. Oh no, <laughs> looked like he'd convinced Gord Brown for a second. <laughs> Brown makes what was clearly the right call. That one did go wide on the far side. Sometimes asking you shall receive. Not quite working out for Hopcroft on that one. Niagara's back up the other end. There's a shot on the run. Stahl can't put that one in. Say a loose ball foul on Niagara. And Durham will get the ball. Triolo's gonna start off with things. Brooker Muir working hard to limit his opportunities, but he gets it up to Hogarth. Durham on the offense. Now Muir goes to cover Josh Wasson. Tell you, Muir just never stops working. Here comes Phil Caputo, another Excelsior grad. Watch by Matt Croak. he's got Muir with him. Muir stopped, boy. He would have been full value for that one. Great effort by Muir now. He's chugging to the bench as hard as he can go to get a change. And he's pretty upset that he didn't finish that one off. Great shift though by Brooker Muir. Again, a New England Black Wolves draft pick. And if they saw that shift, they might just think about bringing him back. Swinging behind the back, low ankle height whip shot by McNulty, who gets the pass back from Hopcroft at mid-floor. Had to hop to get it, shoots behind the back, misses. Close to hitting the net and getting a reset. There's only two seconds left on the shot clock when he took that. We're into the final four minutes. Still tied, 13 all. Niagara's Fowler with the ball, leading scorer in the game with eight points. Gets away from Sullivan, passes across the shot by Newfeld. Masters was all over that one. Nice job by Shule to try and take on those two Niagara players, but eventually they get the ball. Edwards whips it down to Fowler. That shot just off the post may have caught a bit of Ryan Masters shirt first or shoulder pad Newfeld drops the ball he's got some pressure from Rennie passes across to the far side shot a little bit wide oh and you can hear Dumont calling for that ball but it was a bit away from him now Newfeld makes the pass quick movement but Coyle is stopped and they're going to say through the crease, Bill Fox calling that Coyle stepped on the edge of the crease with his toe and then picked up the ball. And Connor Danko at the far end of the floor, the Niagara goalie, thinks he had a good angle on it and was screaming that he didn't touch the crease line. But Durham has the ball, McMahon to Wasson. That's Joe Wasson up to Triolo. Josh Wasson is down low. Now he cuts up to set a pick, rolls off it. Shot by Goddard, stopped by Danko. He's looking up the floor. That's always his first look. Is someone coming off the bench? Stall. Caputo coming to help him with a pick on Triolo. Pass down low and Caputo cuts to the net, but it's a shot. That one's turned aside from the stick. Of Zach Reed. Sorry, had a few number changes before the game, so I'm just Still adjusting to a couple. Durham comes out with the ball. Joe Wasson moves it up to Hopcroft. He's got Gearin with him. Thought about the pass, but they really didn't have numbers. Now they do. Croak to Gearin. Quick stick. Danko is there. Looks behind him, but Danko had it. That's a huge save. Nice pass by Croak and Gearin with the quick release. As fast as Danko was coming across, it turns out Garen probably would have been better off just faking the quick stick, pulling it back and reaching out to go to the far side. But boy, just there's no time to think of that as the ball is coming across. Certainly not a criticism. Fowler, but there's a moving pick. Brendan Tainhouse 
flattens the Durham defender. Now he'll go back onto defense. Hogarth driving to the net, shoots, saved by Danko. It rolls back in. They're going to say Hogarth was still in the crease when the ball was attempted to be played by a turf dog. <laughs> Hogarth almost with another huge goal. His earlier one, gorgeous on the pass from the goalie Masters. Here comes Caputo, into the final minute behind the back, can't connect. A battle for the loose ball. It pops straight up. Oh, McCrory thinking about it. But it just wasn't there for him and he'll head to the bench. They'll get the offense out. 40 seconds to play. Durham with the ball, 15 on the shot clock. Hopcroft lets it fly, saved by Danko. Fresh 30. They can use the whole, they take the timeout. Durham does, 27.3 on the game clock, 26 or so. They're almost simultaneous, the shot and game clock. So Durham will be able to use most of the time. They can pull goaltender Ryan Masters if they choose and set up for what should be a thrilling finish. If we do go to overtime, it is sudden victory overtime and it will be a 10 minute overtime period. I think, I'm just checking with director Matthew Carrick who is pulling out the handy dandy Sealax rule book that we received last night. The rules are online. You can look it up on the Sealax website, canadianlacrosse.com. He's just gonna check it in the hard cover. It's been a while since we had an overtime game. The last one was the championship final for the Creators' Cup last spring. So a two minute rest. It's a five, full, full five minutes of stop time playing four on four. I did not even realize we went to four on four in overtime. So that is exciting news to know. Four on four for five minutes. And then, after those five minutes, we'd go to three players taking penalty shots. We could have a shootout today, you never know. Durham has the ball up top. They've got a fresh 30, 24 seconds left. They do have the goaltender pulled. Matt Croak, Derek Hopcroft, Josh Wasson. All down there on the right side, down low. Triolo with the ball up top. Guerin on the far side along Along with McNulty, Hopcroft to McNulty scores! 2.6 seconds to go, McNulty with the quick stick. Huge goal that will give the Durham Turf Dogs, barring a crazy unforeseen face-off goal, their first victory of the year. And Jonas Dirks is walking behind me, and he's fairly excited. He's staying here to see the replay. The pass across. Hopcroft, a beauty pass to McNulty. What a great release. You just can't cover everyone tightly when they're up six on five. Edwards is gonna try and win the faceoff. McCrory is just gonna clamp down. Now Danko's running to the bench because they've got six guys on the floor and they need him out there. I don't think they're gonna be able to get anyone else. Edwards has to just win it and throw it down the floor. And McCrory just gets in his way. And they're going to say Edwards went early. So it's Durham ball. They're not even looking at the empty net. McCrory's just going to go for a little jog for two and a half seconds. What a finish to this game. My goodness. An exciting game all day. Back and forth sw swings in Canadian Lacrosse League action. Whew, what a game. Final score, 14 to 13 in favor of the Durham Turf Dogs. We'll have our three stars for you in just a moment. A lot going on down the stretch of that game.
Jeff McNulty with a great finishing shot. Hopcroft with the pass across. All right, our three stars of the day, the third star with four goals and assists from the Durham Turf Dogs, Dylan Goddard, solid effort all over the floor. Our second star from the Niagara Lock Monsters, four goals and four assists. What a great effort, just not quite enough. Corey Fowler from the Niagara Lock Monsters and the first star with a goal and six assists. Just making the offense flow is Jesse Guerin, killing penalties, doing it all for the Durham Turf Dogs was Jesse Guerin. I also got to give some props to uh, some Niagara players. Tim Edwards with three goals and an assist in his first Seelax game. Three and one also for Brendan Tainhouse, who was very good. I thought Brooker Muir, no points, but had a tremendous effort all over the floor. For Durham, we saw Jeff McNulty with the winning goal, of course, has to be a consideration, but those are your three stars once again. First, Jesse Guerin. Second, Corey Fowler. Third, Dylan Goddard. That will do it for us today. Remember, in three hours and 19 minutes, Oswegian Demons at Southwest Cyclops. More Canadian Lacrosse League action. I'm Stephen Stamp for the whole JVI crew. Thanks for being with us for this Canadian Lacrosse League action. We'll see you, hey, in a few hours. Bye for now.